In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to auto insert a date and time stamp into an adjacent cell when you update another cell. So for example, we've got a column here called do the thing and I've got on the left hand side the date time stamp. I'm going to add something into the cell like uh, the thing imaginatively genius and you'll see on the left hand side the date and time stamp have auto updated so how do we do this well we do this with a little bit of google app script magic don't worry it's not too complex and there is a copy of the code along with a number of different variants of the code in a link in the description below let's get started so first up head over to your extensions here and click on app scripts and this will open up the Google Apps Scripts IDE for this particular Google Sheet. So go ahead and do that now. And you should see something a little like this on the side here with the function, my function. Maybe some of the stuff across the top isn't there. That's okay. I've made some modifications to the Apps Script IDE that you're working in. I've also, just to make things easier for us to read for this video tutorial, I've also got rid of another section in the sidebar on the left here. You'll have that appearing as well too. Now I'm also going to go into dark mode because that's my preferred mode. You won't have that accessibility on yours. So let's dive in. So we're going to keep this really simple just as a basic macro that you can use in your Google Sheet. We're not going to make anything fancy and we're not going to go into a lot of theory about coding. Our primary aim is just to add this date timestamp in where we need it on our Google Sheet. The first thing we need to do is get rid of this my function here. So I'm just going to select that and hit the delete button. And then I'm going to create a bunch of global variables. So let's give it a title here and we'll call this globals. And then we're going to add in the sheet tab name that we want to add in our date time step two. So we'll say cons. Now good practice here for your global variables is put them in uh, uppercase. So we'll go sheet underscore tab name. And that's going to be equal to, make sure you take underscore off. And this is going to be this sheet one here. Now, sometimes I usually just go down into the sheet tab and, and double click that space, hit control C to copy, and then control V to paste back over. Okay, so we've got our sheet tab name here as our first variable. And then let's make another const variable. That's one, that's a variable that doesn't change. And we'll call it column oh, in capitals underscore two check and that's the column to set check so which column do we want to edit and when we edit that column the adjacent cell will update so let's go over here and the column that we want to check is column number two so i'm not using letters here i'm using a number so this will be column number one this will be column number two three four five and this is fairly standard when we're hitting the coding side of things to use the columns as a number okay one last variable that we'll add in here is going to be our date time column offset. It's a mouthful, I know, but we'll get through it together. So const date time call for short underscore offset. Okay, so what do I mean by offset? That's how many positions to the left or right that we want to offset to add in our date time step. So if we're going to the right, we want to add one for, for if we want to put the date time stamp in column C, we'll add two if we want to put it into D. If we're going backwards from this column B, we'll go minus one to put it in here, which is exactly what we want to do, right? So equals minus one. Cool. So we've got our variables sorted out here. Let's run our function. Now, Google Apps Script in their amazing foresight have made a bunch of custom simple triggers for us to use out of the box. And what these simple triggers do as a trigger might suggest is that when something occurs, you can run a bunch of code. So what we're going to use today is the on edit trigger. So let's create a function called on edit. And every time Google Apps Script sees this on edit in here, it'll go, oh, righto, this is a simple trigger that we've generated. So we, every time we do an edit inside the cell, we want to carry out a bunch of work. So let's finish off this function here. And inside this on edit, automatically it comes with an event parameter, which is often notated as E. 
So this will carry in it a bunch of other bits of data in there as well, which we'll be using in a moment. So I'll just add in some notes. All right, so that should help explain things a bit better for you now. Okay, so on edit, on edit occurs every time we make a change here. So for example, if I go into a cell and type in E, or if I type in T here, that is an on edit condition. And you'll probably see, if you notice up the top here, that there's a little uh, arrow circulating around saying something's processing. So if I grab this E and this T, and I copy and paste it somewhere else like here, and you'll see up the top there, you can see it's processing. So that's, this is an on edit condition. So let me just go ahead and delete those two conditions again now. The first thing we're going to do is grab the event parameter and we're going to get the range inside the event parameter. So const e, uh, const range equals e dot range. So where am I getting this value from? So let's have a look at the docs. Okay, so right now I'm in the event objects of the documentation for Google Apps Script. If we scroll down, we've got, we can see a bunch of simple triggers. One is called on open, on change, and on edit. And on edit's the one we're working on. So the event parameter, this E that's here, will have a bunch of properties that it contains. So we've got the auth mode, the old value of the cell or range, and then the range, so it's the, the current range we're working in. Uh, source, the trigger, UID, the user, for example, their email, and the value. This is all extremely helpful for us. So for us, we just want the range here. So we're going to call const range e dot range to make it easy for us to read. From this, we can grab the Google Sheet or the current sheet that we're working in. So we can then say const current sheet equals range dot get sheet. So what do we want to get the sheet? So let's say we've got another sheet here which has a bunch of other stuff in it and maybe we don't want to apply our auto insert date time picker into this sheet tab. So we need to validate and make sure that we're on the right sheet to do what we want to do. So that's why we've got this current sheet. And once we've got this current sheet, we want to check to make sure that the current sheet matches the sheet tab name that we want to work in. So let's do that first. So let's say if current, if current sheet dot get name. So basically we've got the main sheet here and once we've got the sheet object, we can call the get name method from that sheet object to retrieve the name, which is going to be for us because we're on this one at the moment, it's going to be sheet one. Now, normally we'd want to check to make sure that it matches or is equal to, and then do a bunch of stuff inside the if statement. But if we did that, then we're going to start nesting lots and lots of if statements. So every time we start a new if statement, the next bit of information is going to go over to the right more and more and more and more. A simple workaround for this is just to do the opposite. So for example, if I say if the current sheet name get name does not equal the sheet tab name, then we just want to return the function. So we want to do nothing. So now that validation is out of the way and done. So what about our next piece of validation? Well, we want to validate to see that we're on the right column. So if we're editing this column, then we want to display our date time step. So let's go and make a constant. So const column equals range dot get column. Okay, so from this range object, we can call the get column method to find out what column it is on. And this is going to return a column number. So we can do the same again to validate and with an if statement. So we can say if this time we'll say column is not equal to and then we want to use this column to check up the top here so column to check then we don't want to do anything we'll hit return okay so that's done so if you're curious why i haven't put this variable up the top here to keep all the variables in the same location is basically we don't want to run any extraneous code and waste the time processing if we don't have to. So if we've decided that the sheet tab is the wrong sheet tab, what's why bother trying to find the column number and waste valuable time?
So instead, we look for this column number once we've verified that the sheet tab is the tab that we need to be on. The next thing we need to do is to get our column range. Now we could just get the current cell that we're on, like this one here, but what happens if we wanted to add in, for example, two, three, and four, what happens if someone selects all of this, control C and then control V and adds it in? We wanna apply the date timestamp to each one of these. So we're gonna do things a little bit uh, differently here. Okay, so our next task now is to grab the range again. So we're going to say range here. And we want to create our offset now. So I'm just gonna change some things. I'm going to hit enter and tab here. Move this mouse out of the way. And I'm going to use the offset method. And with our offset method, you can see here in the notes, we've got a row offset. We don't want to offset the row up or down. We want to keep everything on the same row. So we'll say zero here. And then we want to apply our date time column offset here, which for us in this case will be minus one. From that, we can then set the values. So set value. Now we could use set values, in which case we'd have to generate a 2D array and apply different values to each one of the arrays, or we could cheat and just use a set value and it will apply the same value to each item in the array. So what value are we going to add? It's going to be the date time stamp. Now we haven't made that yet, so we're gonna go up to the top up above here and create that. So we'll say const date time stamp is equal to new Date. And this is a JavaScript date constructor here. Let's hit save now. And let's head back over to our Google Sheet and type in some more details here. So we'll say another thing. Well, you can see we've got a date here, but no time. That's okay. So basically what's happening is putting in the date timestamp from the new date here, but it's the formatting of the sheet that needs to change. So if I just select A2 and hold shift down to, let's say A20, for example, go into formats, number, and I can check any one of these. So I'm gonna type in, you know, things have been squished around a bit here because I've, I've made the page a bit smaller, but you can get the idea. So we can change this to date and time here, and you can see now that that's been changed. Okay, success. So we can say, we, we succeeded. Awesome, date time stamped again. What about if we just copy all of this and paste it in here? Another success. Each one of these date time stamps has been added to the correct time. Cool. What happens if we want to move our date time stamp to, let's say column, D. Let's make that bold um, and we will delete that. And let's delete the Cool. All right, so column D. So that's going to be a positive integer and it's gonna be offset by two columns. So that's one, two columns over here. So let's hit two now and make sure we save. And let's go over to here and we'll type in, I don't know, cheese. Who doesn't love cheese? I suppose people are lactose intolerant. Oh, and uh, this time around, maybe we just want to add in the time for our formatting. So let's go over to here, number and time this time around. Uh, cake. Gotta love some cake. And just to prove things, we can copy and paste things. And that's auto updated. Okay, so that's it for auto adding in a date time stamp when you edit a cell in Google Sheets using Google Apps Scripts. Now there are a huge number of different variations to this and in the written tutorial you'll find in the link below, uh, you'll see a number of examples of uh, me providing different variations to this date timestamp inserter. Hopefully from these variations, you'll be able to figure out your own needs for your own projects. If you've enjoyed this tutorial, please hit that like button. And if you wanna see more tutorials like this, subscribe. Until next time.